Hi everybody, welcome to my channel Frugal is Smart. My name's Sam and this is where I talk about all things sewing. Today is day 79 of 100 days of sewing and it's another Frugal Friday. Today I will be looking at this week's sewing bee, uh, giving a quick review and trying to find some free patterns that have been inspired by this week's bee. So first of all I'd just like to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed to my channel so far and uh, if you haven't already subscribed please consider hitting the subscription button and that will tell you when I've got new videos out usually on a Friday with the Frugal Fridays uh, generally midweek I will have a video that's either a tutorial or a sew along or tips and tricks and then on Sunday it's usually plans, makes and reviews that sort of thing so on to today's video. So the theme on the Great British Sewing Bee this week was music of the movies. And I've got to admit, I'm not a big musical fan, uh, so I was a little bit dreading this one, but I was quite pleased to see the first round, the pattern challenge was Dirty Dancing, which is a film that I actually liked. Never really considered that as a musical, I always considered it as a, a film with good music in it, but anyway. So the contestants were to recreate the dress that Baby wore at the end of the film, which was a full circle skirt with a chiffon overlay, fitted bodice, and it was fully lined, a uh, lapped zipper, and then a waistband, which had a like a lace overlay on it. Quite a difficult one, really, in the four and a half hours that they were given. So we're down to five contestants now, and yeah, it, it's, it is quite close. There's not much between them, you know, they're, they're all quite good sewers. It's just time pressure, and obviously with this particular challenge, you've got uh, tricky fabrics as well. They were specifically told to use like satins and chiffons. They couldn't just go and use a nice stable cotton or something like that. So poor Serena, who thought she'd done with the uh, satins last week with all the bubbling that she had she was a bit like crestfallen because she really didn't want to didn't want to use that sort of fabric again but as it turned out she was the one that had had a bit of practice so she did she did better than everybody I think really with it and I think the contestants really sort of struggled with the full circle skirt dropping uh, and I think they did that last year with the contestants as well. They, they kind of set them up to fail in a way. Skirts like that, full circle skirts, they really need time, you know, a good 24 hours to drop before you start trimming them. Uh, so I think there was only Serena really who had chance to uh, trim her skirt before it was hemmed. So they were specifically asking for the underlayer to be overlocked and then single fold hem and then the chiffon overlayer uh, it was supposed to be like a rolled hem on the uh, overlocker, which I've actually done a tutorial for. I've just learned to do that myself this, this year on my overlocker. So hopefully they might have watched. <laughs> I think it's unlikely. But yeah, no, it's not something that everybody knows how to do on an overlocker, whether they've got people there that tells them how to get on, I don't know. So how did they get on? Damien didn't do too well. He he didn't manage to finish his hems and he sort of went rogue a little bit with the zip. And I don't think that was a question of him not reading the instructions. I think it was a question of him not having the time to learn how to do a lapped zipper. So just went ahead and did it how he knew rather than having an unfinished garment. I think it, that's that's the way he decided to proceed. Fare, she did a, a red dress and she had similar problems. She did actually get a zip in uh, and she did do a, a lapped zip, but it was all quite misaligned at the back. And then she tried to hide it with a, a lace overlay. I don't think a lace was actually sewn on. I think she just tied it at the back. I think she had a hole at the bottom where the zip was as well. So although she got her zip in, it was still unhemmed and the lace wasn't finished neither. Raf managed to get everything done apart from the lace overlay. His uh, overlocker malfunctioned halfway through the hem. So so not really his fault but so it's quite a close one between Serena and Rebecca I don't know if it was the editing but Rebecca was quite sort of um, competitive this time both of them did a, a great job they had to bag out the lining and the outer bodice and I think Rebecca's was just a little bit untidy on the sleeve where they had to hand so I think her, her zip wasn't quite perfect neither so Serena was the only one who actually got a chance to level off her hem and finish the whole thing so I think if I was doing that particular challenge I would be tempted to complete the skirt first and give it a chance to hang a little bit 
and then come back and hem it. Uh, everybody else was sort of doing the bodice, which obviously is the longest part. I think they said there was 10 parts, 10 pieces to the actual bodice part of it. And that is a natural thing to do, is to try and get that done and then the, the skirt's a little bit easier, but at least you, your skirt would have chance to hang and drop a little bit before you start trying to hem it. So naturally Serena won that one and Damien came last on that one. Fari came fourth and Raph was third. So I think the dress that they use, I think it's probably been drafted for the show. Um, but I've been able to find a few dresses that is there or thereabouts. Obviously, for trying to find a free pattern uh, that's exactly the same is, is nigh on impossible because if they've drafted it for the programme, then I'm not going to be able to. The actual pattern that was drafted wasn't exactly the same as the one that Jennifer Grey wore in the film anyway. So I found a couple that was quite similar. One was the Patsy Party dress by Rebecca Page. That's got a couple of variations, but it's got a child's version as well. Both of them are free. The adults one has got an off the shoulder version and the child's one's got a small strap and I think if you could work out how to put the straps on uh, you, you're more or less there with that one. You would have to actually shorten this one because it's, it's too long compared to the one that they had in the film. But yeah, that goes from a 31 inch bust up to a 54 inch bust and I think it's a really nice party dress, a really nice free dress. Obviously the fabric that you use makes all the difference on this one, but it does have the overlay does this one I think. So yeah, it's quite a close one. Alternatively, So Magazine have got three dresses that all have instructions. Unfortunately, unless you download them you can't see what the size range is and the instructions are a bit vague because there have been free patterns in a magazine so the, the instructions are quite vague. I would say there were more 1950s than there were 1960s. The closest one that I found was a classic polka dot dress from Sew Magazine. Again a little bit long and I think it probably had a gathered skirt on that one quite easy to swap out for a full circle skirt I think. The Audrey dress does have the full circle skirt, it has a, it has a circle skirt, it's more squared off at the, at the neckline with ties on. And then they've got the Betty dress as well which is you know it's fairly similar but again it's got the gathered skirt so there's loads and loads of uh, circle skirt uh, patterns online. Mood have one and I think actually Sew so Magazine have one. You could quite easily draft your own circle skirt None of them really have the waistband on it, so if you're really looking for something authentic, I think you're probably going to have to find one to pay for. Those are the four that I found um, that using the right kind of fabric, you could get something very similar if you wanted to replicate the dress that baby wore. So the contestants had four and a half hours to do that. It wasn't an impossible task, it's just that you're using really sort of slippy fabrics and knowing how to handle them and if you're Damien knowing how to put a lap zip zipper in. <laughs> um, so on to the transformation round and that was to transform curtains into uh, a child's play suit. It had to have shorts or trousers in it so it was based on Sound of Music basically. It's on the scene where Maria makes clothes for the Von Trapp children out of curtains. So yeah, it's supposed to be a practical play outfit for a child and it must have shorts or trousers. So they could use any haberdashery but no extra fabric. Raph was uh, seen made, making lederhosen as was Damien. Fari sort of went for something similar to what she'd made her girls with a little ruffle sleeve and then it was just like a, a bodice with trousers on. And then Rebecca made like a, a dress with shorts underneath and a little bow on and elasticated straps so they could easily get it on and off. I thought her design was really quite clever and quite complex. She did more than what was required really. Serena won this one with a little kimono sleeved top and then hit our collots and she did an applique design in the middle. So once again Serena won this round. Damien came fourth this time, Fari fifth and then Raf came third and Rebecca second. So you could really sort of see Rebecca getting a little bit irked that she was uh, second every time. So yeah you saw Serena have a really good day and Rebecca I don't think she was seething exactly but I think she was determined to win something the next day. Um, poor Fari was in tears at the end of it but she's quite strong I think she there was no drama you know she was just a little bit like tomorrow's another day sort of thing. The final round was inspired by Dream Girls which is a film inspired by the Supremes I believe based in the 1970s 
So they were looking for sort of glamorous fabrics, sequins, probably gold lame, sort of very dramatic fabrics that look good on the stage, outfits that are made to be seen in and I think Esme were expecting something a little bit sexy. So I'll start with a couple of the patterns that we actually saw flashed on screen and Damien's for sure you saw that uh, flashed up and that was a Vogue one. I don't think he'd ever actually seen Dream Girls, <laughs> a bit like me. So he was uh, kind of making up the story and his exact words was, I think it's a dancing thing and then went on to Austin Powers or something. His design was called Foxy Cleopatra which I think is a character from Austin Powers which was a bit b bizarre. It, I mean he was missing the brief completely. The actual dress that he, pattern that he used was very dramatic and had lots of angles to it. Square neckline, lots of opportunities for colour blocking. Esme did say that it was more 1980s and yeah you saw him using furnishing fabric which I think I think Joe described as something that you see in a low budget hotel. He was using sort of the right colours for the era sort of oranges and browns and, and metallic bronzes and things like that but his dress was short. I think he did have done well to have actually watched the film or clips of it at the, at the very least. Uh, so I don't think he did himself any favours really on that one. Did get it finished, you didn't see him fit it at all until the end and I think Esme pull, pulled him up on the fact that it was falling off the shoulders. Now if you read the reviews of that pattern it's quite a common problem with that pattern so not entirely his fault but he should have tried it on really, make sure that that wasn't going to happen. Got no free pattern alternatives for that one I'm afraid, it's far too complex for a free pattern or even ideas of how you can hack it um, but like I say you saw him flash it on the screen and that was a Vogue uh, V1673. So the other pattern that you saw flashed up on the screen was Fari's pattern, that was the Simplicity pattern 8870. So this was really unusual, it, she did it all in red, um, it was just an off the shoulder number. The pattern that she used had a fishtail skirt to it but she did it much more slim fitting. Big split at the front and the unusual bit about it was it, it was off the shoulder and then it had this one sleeve coming right over the, the other arm. Really, really stunning dress. The nature of the fabric meant that any puckers really did show up and I would say that was true on all of them, apart from Damien who didn't use sort of sequins or, or lame or, or satin or anything like that. But Rebecca, Fari and Serena all use like sequins and things like that and you could see puckers on them all because that's just the nature of the fabric. It would have been really difficult not to have, have had that showing up. She used red, uh, red sequins and red lace and the only thing that she got picked up for, for really was a little bit of puckering on the seams and then I think she stretched it out ever so slightly across one of the shoulders. I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole finding a pattern for this one and found a website called Modern, Modern Sewing. Never come across this one before, loads and loads of free patterns on there but boy is it difficult to navigate. So what they have is a one line description of whatever it is with a link and then you've got to click through to that link and that description might just say dress or blue dress or whatever <laughs> so I'll share my screen with you and you can see what I mean but there was one that said blue dress and I, I, I don't know why I continued with this I mean it was it were a bit daft really but I did find a uh, off the shoulder full length dress with a split up side it didn't have the sleeve in it but I thought I'd done all right with that one. That is available in four sizes. It's in centimetres, so it goes from a small, which is 80 cent 86 centimetres, up to an extra large, which is 107 centimetres, which is up to a 42 inch bust. It has got some interesting sort of um, panels that go across it. You could work with that or not. But yeah, really nice, sexy dresses, that one. Never used them before, I've got no, if, if anybody's used this modern patterns before, let me know. I don't even know where the base. I suspect the European with the centimetres rather than American because Americans tend to use inches and I don't, I don't think it's English either because of the, the, the wording's a bit janky. But yeah, um, there's that one. Or on the Mood website there is the Vinca dress. Now this is nothing like what Fari used but I thought if you were looking for something that's asymmetric with one sleeve this is like a bodycon dress uh, and I thought I'd just include that one as well because it is quite quite different, quite unique. So on to Raph's little number and he went completely off-piste or completely different to everybody else 
and did this gold llama jumpsuit which he I think he did he did the foil wrapping himself so I did like pink and gold chevron cut it on the bias very very low cut jumpsuit narrow legs so yeah Raf's was completely different with the with the cape and what have you but completely in keeping with 1970s theme really this is why I brought this along for you to see um, this is a, an original 1970s pattern that I made up a couple of years ago for a Great British Sewing Bee Challenge that in 19, they did 1970s week and it does have a cape on it uh, it is a separate little cape I think actually the pattern might have incorporated it in the dress but I decided to do it separate because I don't think I'd ever really wear it with a cape but yeah, it's very, this is an empire line dress, but I thought I'd just show you the little cape that comes with it. I think it, it is sort of pure 1970s is that. Rasp was a lot sort of longer, but if I can find the pattern, I'll insert it for you to have a look. So I did find a free pattern for Rasp's little jumpsuit, and that is a Phoebe jumpsuit by Pattern Union. Really versatile pattern is this one. Uh, loads and loads of options. You can download it as A0 or A4 and you can just personalise it as much as you want. You can choose the length of the trousers. The trousers are quite a bit wider than the ones that uh, Raf went for but you can you can narrow those off and the way that it's fastened there's lots of different options of fastening it so you could go sort of more deep V. I mean it's not an exact replica but I think if you wanted to do something similar you could very very easily do that. Loads and loads of cape tutorials online for making a cape. They're very simple, really. So yeah, if you fancy if you fancy flouncing about in a cape and a gold llama jumpsuit, or you're invited to a 1970s uh, disco, the Phoebe jumpsuit would be a good one. And also over on the Mood website, there is a jumpsuit that is like a combination of fairies and rafts, and that is like a one shoulder with a ruffle across it, uh, but it's a jumpsuit. It's made out of knit, so lovely and comfortable. But the top does remind me very much of a 1970s. That is called the Marina, and that goes from a 32 inch bust up to a 58 and a half inch bust, so a good wide size range. Really nice little summer jumpsuit with this, and like I say, it's made in a knit, so yeah, it'd be nice and comfortable. Yeah, and I think it would give you a nice combination of both if you're just looking for a, a general 1970s look. So I thought I'd include that one. Right, so Serena's was absolutely stunning. And I think she's probably hacked a simple shift dress. And just what she did was use two different lots of sequins. There were sequins everywhere. Patrick were covered in sequins. Red and silver. And then she had this band going from the front, round the side, to the back, which had a curve on it. And she said she put like 20 notches in it to, to line it up. So what I think she's done is used a simple shift dress and then hacked this waved band across the front into it. I do think actually the contestants should be given more credit for doing that sort of thing. I mean, Raph's done it consistently. I did use a pattern for this for his. I've got a couple of options for Serena's and the first one is the Pauline Alice Abelian shift dress and that is cut on the bias actually so I wouldn't want to be doing sequins and, and putting all those curves on, on the bias but it is an option if you just want in a, a really simple uh, shift dress this one's only knee length so you would have to, to lengthen it Serena's did have a little bit of a split in it as well but quite simple to do the other one is by Alyssa C Montanez and that is only the silk cami so you could just extend that to whatever length that you wanted but I think both of those in a satin rather than sequins or you can do both would be really really nice actually when I'm thinking about it one of the old um, Great British Sewing Bee books has got a shift dress in it and uh, with sequins uh, so I'll insert a picture of that whilst I'm talking as well. Fairly spot on is that one. But obviously I'm not going to find one with all the curves around it. I mean, that's just... <laughs> I'm fairly sure she, she drafted that herself. So the Pauline Alice shift dress goes from a 31.5 inch bust up to a 42.5 inch bust. And the Alyssa C. Montanese one, that's very, very similar. That's 32 inch to 42 inch bust. So yeah, you would have to do a bit of extending on both of them uh, just to get that 
uh, full length look or the one in the Great British Sewing Bee. And then Mood have got a couple of options as well. Uh, Mood have got one that's called the Terra. I think the top part of it is quite good as an option, but the skirt part of it is quite full. I think there's about six panels in the skirt part of it. But a stunning dress, uh, if you wanted to do that in a satin, you would have to change the skirt part of it. And then the Todea, that is a really, really sexy dress. It's all laced at the back. Again, much more airline in the skirt part of it, but all decent options, I think. So finally, Rebecca went for gold on gold on gold. So she used a gold satin and it was like a princess seam bodice, a fitted skirt, which went onto like a fishtail bottom. So I'm fairly sure that Rebecca used the McCall 7540. She just used the bodice of one and the uh, skirt of another one. And the skirt was all made of a, like a sparkly chiffon and it was absolutely fantastic. She'd been involved in dancing so I think she knew what the judges were looking for really. You did see her actually using the serger to finish the bottom of her ruffles and then cut it off right at the last minute. And the judges did say that was the right decision to do. Uh, I haven't got an alternative for this one, unfortunately. I've, I've not found anything for that. Did have a bit of a cutaway sleeve at the top. Um, but yeah, absolutely stunning. And at last she managed to get uh, uh, just rewards and, and win that one. So yeah, I think Esme was pulling towards Raf's because it was so different and so unusual. Um, but I think Patrick was pulling towards more towards Rebecca's. And it was nice to see Rebecca win something at long last. But... To be fair, I think all of them did really, really well. Um, you know, everybody finished and unfortunately Damien had to go. He was four out of five in one round, five out of five in another round. And I don't think he hit the brief at all on the final round this time. So sadly, we had to say goodbye to Damien, who had been a great laugh all the way through. He's completely oblivious to <laughs> instructions, <laughs> but... You know, sometimes you've got to get things finished how, how you've got to get them finished. So that's the sewing bee this week. Did see quite a few broken needles and, and what have you with the sequins. I always thought you had to remove sequins before you sort through them, but nobody seemed to be doing that this time. But So on to a couple of discounts now. I haven't got many this week. I'm going to keep it, try and keep it brief, she says. <laughs> Um, Helen's Closet has got the Winslow Colots on offer for all of June and that is 20% off. This is quite a versatile pattern. I hadn't realised how many variations you could do of this so I might be tempted to buy these myself. Philippa, my boss at work, she was wearing a pair the other day and I thought, yeah, quite wear those actually. So this was her first ever pattern out in 2016. I didn't know that. And she's extended the size range, so it goes up to a size 60 inch hip now. Lots of uh, variations and lots of hacks. Helen, uh, Helen's Closet always does lots of hacks for her patterns, so good value for money, I think. So that goes on throughout the whole of June. And then Pattern Emporium have brought out a tiered dress, but it is for knit fabric. So if you see my video earlier this week where I hacked a ruffle top into a tiered dress, that was a woven. Obviously you could do that for a knit yourself, but I know that hacking and all this drafting and things like that's not for everybody. So if you fancy having a pattern that does it all for you, tons and tons of variations on this one. It's 15% off until the weekend. With the 15% off that's equivalent to about £6.50 in UK and $9 in US. If you go over to Kristen's channel over at Daily Society, she's got a full review of, she's made lots of variations, got a full review of it. So I'll leave a link to her channel below and I think she's got a, an affiliate link as well so you might help her challenge channel out a little bit. It's really nice of her to, she gave me a, a shout out for using the elastic for doing the tiered dress which obviously you can use for wovens and for knits as well. So yeah, good good value pattern that. And not only is that pattern on offer, I think she's got about 11 patterns uh, on offer and to this weekend, so all with 15% off over at the Pattern Emporium. Waves and Wild have got the Jackie V neck t-shirt. This is a child's t-shirt. It goes from premature babies, newborn babies, 
right up to age 12. And that's three Australian dollars, which is about £1.50 UK. Yeah, really versatile little t-shirt, long sleeve, short sleeve, you can hack it, you can block it. If you've got children and you buy that, and it's unisex, it's just a v-neck t-shirt for a child, so it's unisex. So yeah, if you buy that for a newborn, you've got, <laughs> you've got a t-shirt there for years and years to come. If you've got boys and girls, you've got a really versatile pattern there. Um, Ellie and Mac have got their usual $1 Wacky Wednesday. Quite a few uh, tops and dresses in there. Ones that particularly caught my eye this time. They've got a rouge tee and then they've got uh, a be captivating top and dress. And that's just like a, a cross wrap, but fitted. Quite a sexy little little number is that one. So that's for a dollar. We've got a chill tee and hoodie on that's up for a dollar as well. Uh, that's a, I think that's a man's pattern. And then mid for mermaids have got lots of swimwear patterns on for seven or eight dollars, depending on which one. And they've got some pattern bundles on for that as well. So if you've got your mind on swimwear, if you're going on a holiday and you're wanting to make your own swimwear, Quite a few options there. So that's it for discounts this week. Just a couple of challenges that I wanted to give a shout out for and that is a couple that I've mentioned before. Sew Together for Summer, that's going on until the 21st of June. Uh, that's to make a summer dress. They are specifically saying that it should be a sleeveless dress but any pattern and loads and loads of prizes for that one. Did mention it in a previous video so I won't go into too much detail for that one. Uh, that's been run over on Instagram, so it's just a matter of making something and sharing it on Instagram. And then I mentioned before about Jo, who is so Joey, and she's doing so a t-shirt challenge. Uh, again, you can use a short sleeve t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt, t-shirt dress. And I will be bringing out a video about different t-shirt patterns as well. She's got lots and lots of prizes up for grabs. And Jo actually gave me the heads up of a competition that's being held on Instagram throughout June. And that is to win a sewing machine. That is over on the Singer outlet. And it's to win a Starlet 6680 plus accessories and it's just a question of following them and tagging somebody in. That's over on Instagram and I presume it's UK only because I think it's a .co.uk one. There are three runners up prizes as well of accessory trade so worth a go. So that's it from me today. I've not got a great deal of uh, discounts and what have you. I'm just trying to keep it brief this time but if you see anything feel free to leave it in the comments below. Tag me on Instagram and I'll try and repost it if I get time. If you see a competition and you've got nobody to tag I'm through Google is somewhere over on Instagram so feel free to tag me over there. If you enjoyed this sort of video please consider subscribing and I will speak to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.